I hope I contribute to its early arrival. What we need to do is take a look at uh, uh, the scriptures, and the reason I'm going to do this is because uh, Bishop Spong in your book and Dr. Martin in your book, you have both said people need to go to the scripture, although you've come out with different points of view. And uh, Bishop Spong, you have said that if people that are Christians would go to these texts that are traditionally used to show that it is wrong, that they will get a different idea. And so I would like to do that. And uh, uh, Dr. Martin, why don't you summarize uh, for us, and then Bishop Spong, you can uh, uh, speak to uh, the thought. We'll have some dialogue. Let's start with uh, number one in the Bible there concerning Sodom and Gomorrah. Dr. Martin? Well, the biblical position on Sodom and Gomorrah and the position in context as far as the Jews were concerned was that what took place was the judgment of God upon a very wicked city. Not just wicked in terms of sexual immorality, but also in the fact that it cared nothing for the poor, that it abused the blessings which had been given to it. But the basic idea of Sodom's judgment, and that's why the term itself in the uh, Jewish dictionaries, the Jewish commentaries, the rabbinical commentaries, the Targums, all of this material always sets it in the context of the Sodomites. So when you talk about homosexuality, you are talking about Sodomites, identifying them as actually holding positions which were abnormal and contrary to nature, as the Jews understood it, as they understood God to have revealed it, and this is carried through also into the New Testament. In fact, it specifically says that what they were doing was wicked and vile and detestable, and therefore it is involving very specifically sexual transgression at this particular point. Also, when the uh, mob came outside of Lot's house, uh, they were specific in saying, bring them out to us, the two angels, that we may have sexual relations with them. There's no challenge about the fact that it was sexual relations. Now, this wasn't gang rape. This wasn't male prostitution. This was a projection of the nature of Sodom, which was not interested in young girls or in normal sex primarily, but also, but primarily in, I should say, uh, homosexual activities. Bishop Spong, you've uh, taken some uh, exception to uh, the traditional stance. Would you tell us what that is? Yes. First of all, I'd like to say that when you talk about homosexuality, it is probably the most controversial subject, the ones about which we have the deepest prejudice, the one that it is the hardest to hear. So I would urge this audience, both the television audience and the present audience, to at least be sensitive to the fact that we're describing human beings. I'd agree. Who are homosexual persons. And as I say, it's very difficult to talk about this. Now, I think we ought to go one step further and say that as far as Christianity is held through history is that whether a person sins homosexually or heterosexually or steals or robs, they are still made in the image of God. That's and true. they are full human beings. We might believe they're fallen, they're sinful, and Christ can change them. But yes. uh, I agree with but you. I, I Roll think on. it's important that we at least set that kind of sensitivity when Christians begin to talk about some human beings. Yes. I'm not here to defend the, con the present scientific estimates but I'll at least state them. I have no way of documenting them, but the present scientific estimates in this country are that up to 10% of our population is gay or lesbian at all times. Now, if that is true, and I'm not, as I say, here yes. to defend that, but if that is true, we need to keep in mind that that means one out of every 10 people that we meet. It means that homosexual, gay, and lesbian people are our own brothers and sisters, our own children, our own aunts and uncles that these are not evil people out somewhere, but they are people that all of us know and love, whether we know that they're gay or lesbian people or not. So with, with that background, it is, it is important, I think, that we be very, very sensitive. Okay, how do you now, reckon that in with uh, your thinking on Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, let's, let's go to Sodom and Gomorrah. First of all, I'd say if all of the men of the village of Sodom are outside demanding that two males be brought out so that they might be sexually abused, that that does constitute gang rape. I mean, all the men of the city? Secondly, among those all the men of the city are the two young men who are engaged to be married to Lot's two daughters. I think that that's rather interesting, that they would be wanting to go in both directions. But the final and most important thing about the Sodom and Gomorrah story, now there are a number of really interesting nuances about it. 
You see, the two angels come down to Sodom because God wants to know whether or not Sodom is evil. I think that's a very interesting concept of God. He doesn't seem to know, and so he has to send messengers literally down on the earth. Then, the, uh, then they, Lot gives them the hospitality of his home. In the ancient world, you need to understand that hospitality meant the difference between life and death. Also, you need to understand that the way people could violate strangers, show their power over strangers, humiliate strangers. The favorite way of doing that in the ancient world was to force the male strangers, because women didn't wander from village to village in that era, force the male strangers to take the role of women in the sex act. That is, by, by doing homosexual activities on these men, they were in fact insulting women. But the, the, the most important thing to me is Lot's behavior. He was spared. He was therefore accounted among the righteous. And what did Lot do? Lot went to his door and he said to this mob from the village of Sodom, he said, you're, you're being evil. And I agree, they were being evil. And he said, I have given these two angels, these two messengers, visitors, the hospitality and protection of my home. I beg you not to do this. But he then goes on to say, I will placate you in your anger because I have two virgin daughters and I will send them out to you and you can do with them what you will. My brothers and sisters, I have three daughters. That is not righteous behavior. I agree. I cannot understand why that story is quoted as a way to condemn anything. I can condemn a lot of things from that story. But the Bible is, uh, when it talks about uh, Judas went out and hanged himself, and it gives that description, it's not teaching we ought to all go and do the same. That's correct. And I'm not sure that because it describes an accurate uh, statement that Lot made, that therefore it is teaching that uh, we ought to all gang rape women instead of men. Yes, but I want you to know that Lot was accounted righteous. For that what? behavior is part of Lot. In what context in Peter do you find that? In Peter? Mm-hmm. I don't understand why your reference to Peter. It, well, where is that reference found that he's a righteous man? Well, it's in the whole story of Genesis. Yes, and it's whole, also in the, the New whole Testament. The whole purpose of those visitors to go down there was to see whether or not there were ten righteous people who could be spared, and the only ones that were judged righteous and spared were Lot, his wife, his two daughters. Yes, do you, do you see any definition of righteous that would fit that context that you're seeing? I do not regard Lot's behavior in that instance as righteous behavior. No, and I don't either, but there are some things about Lot that are righteous that he would be thought to be righteous and could be called that. For example, David is called a man after God's own heart, right? Yes. Now, he murders, commits adultery, and he's still called a man after God's own heart. Why? Because the overall tenor of his life was that. And that's the way I think that he's referred to in Scripture. Well, not that everything that Lot does is perfect, and not, absolutely not, the fact that when he's offering his daughters is this something that we ought to emulate and that he is righteous because he does it? But John, I do not believe that you call off a gang of males who want to sexually abuse two males with I the offering of your daughters I to that gang of males. I, I think you ought to deal with the negativity of that whole behavior. I agree that that is absolutely wrong, but it still doesn't get away from the fact that the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah is homosexuality. Well, I would say that uh, Dr. Martin is correct in that the Hebrew verb, which he translated, yada. Uh, yeah, that yada. Hebrew verb literally means to know. Yes. And it does carry the connotation. But let me say that I do not disagree that homosexuality is condemned in Scripture. I do not disagree with yes, that. I think that, that is book. obvious. Yes. It's in Leviticus, it's in the Sodom and Gomorrah story, it's in the Pauline Corpus, at least, and All right. probably some other places.